Hello my lovely kids I am Achal Rohila and today we are going to start with a new chapter that is the plant kingdom right so before we start with this new lecture new chapter i really want to know how you guys are doing i hope you all are doing well and you are studying well and solving as many as question you can uh, from the chapter that we have already discussed right so today we will start with plant kingdom chapter it is a very important chapter right and very interesting chapter in which uh, in this chapter you are going to learn about lots of uh, types of and groups of plants right so without any delay let's start with our lecture so uh, before we uh, discuss about different kind of plants in this chapter we need to understand how these group of uh, plants or how these classifications were given by different scientists right so uh, first type of classification so first we are going to discuss about system of classifications with respect to plants in the last lecture in the last chapter we discuss about system of classification with respect to all organism here we are going to discuss system of classification with respect to plants so a uh, first type of classification was given that is artificial system of classification artificial system of classification why we are calling it artificial because it is based on few morphological characters or external character morphological characters so this system of classification is mainly based on few morphological characters like vegetative and reproductive characters so both vegetative and reproductive characters were uh, studied externally right so internal structure was not studied so in vegetative characters we can take a uh, root stem and leaf and in reproductive character we can take flower or uh, any other reproductive part in plants so uh, this artificial system of classification was entirely based on external characters of vegetative and reproductive features and uh, this this system of classification was given by aristotle and it was given by linnaeus so aristotle basically as you know classified the plants on the basis of length of stem or height of plant herb shrub and trees so this was only or entirely based on vegetative character based on vegetative character on the height of plant whereas linnaeus he divided the plant on the basis of androsium structure or we can uh, say reproductive feature linnaeus basically divided the plant on the basis of reproductive feature cryptogams and phanerogams crypto means hidden and phanero means exposed so cryptogams means the reproductive uh, part is hidden reproductive part is hidden whereas in phanerogams beta
reproductive part is exposed so on the basis of whether the reproductive part is hidden or exposed linnaeus divided the plant into two groups cryptogams and phanerogams whereas aristotle on the basis of height of stem he divided the plant into herb shrub and trees so now we are going to discuss about the limitation and disadvantages of artificial system of classification what what the disadvantages as you can infer from artificial system of classification there can be several disadvantages first is that it is only based on few morphological characters it was based on few morphological characters and he gave equal importance to vegetative as well as reproductive feature gave equal importance to vegetative and reproductive characters whereas reproductive character should be given more importance but here they gave equal importance to stem root and leaf and a flower whereas flower should given more importance right this is just an example for your reference third is no evolutionary relationship was studied so they did not study any evolutionary relationship which means from which ancestor the plant came right how the two plants are connected to each other how uh, matlab who are their ancestor so no evolutionary relationship was studied in artificial system of classification i hope this is clear to all of you so in artificial system of classification uh, it was only based on external characters right no internal characters or no evolutionary relationship was studied in artificial system of classification right so after this artificial system of classification next came beta natural system of classification natural system of classification so nat natural system of classification based on natural affinity natural affinity among organisms it means when we studied both external and internal characters thoroughly then automatically the similar organism came into the same group and different organism went into different group right uh, there is one more disadvantages that i want to discuss here the fourth dis disadvantage of artificial system of classification that same species or similar species were separated and placed into different groups so what happened in artificial system of classification that similar species because only external characters were studied so similar species were separated and placed into different groups because detailed study was not done detail study was not done because of that similar species went into different group whereas in natural system of classification because it was based on natural affinity so both external and external characters were studied both external as well as internal features were studied 
right so in natural system of classification both were considered internal feature includes anatomy anatomy means internal structure uh, study of internal structure ultra structure means study of detail structure ultra structure mean detail structure phytochemistry the presence of different chemicals and molecules in plant phytochemistry right and embryology embryology means the study of embryo development so internal features included many thing anatomy anatomy means study of internal structure ultra structure means study of detail structure phytochemistry means study of different molecules or chemicals in the plant and embryology means study of embryo development so these kind of internal uh, features were included in natural system of classification a uh, natural system of classification was given by bentham and hooker right so natural system of classification was given by bentham and hooker what was the disadvantages disadvantages were that no evolutionary relationship was studied here also so no evolutionary relationship was considered here right they did not basically consider the evolutionary relationship they did not study about ancestor second bentham and hooker placed gymnosperms between dicot and monocot beta according to bentham and hooker system of classification gymnosperms came between dicot and monocot but in reality but in reality gymnosperms came first then dicot and then monocot so in reality gymnosperms came first then dicot came dicot of angiosperms came and then monocot of angiosperms came right but according to bentham and hooker system of classification they placed gymnosperm between dicot and monocot so according to bentham and hooker gymnosperm uh came between dicot and monocot plants but in reality gymnosperms came first right and during the course of evolution then dicot came and then monocot okay so we can clearly say that the monocot are the most advanced plants okay so remember this natural system of classification included both internal and external characters after this phylogenetic system of classification came after this phylogenetic system of classification came as the name suggest phylogeny means evolutionary relationship right so this phylogenetic system of classification based on evolutionary relationship evolutionary relationship or phylogeny so this phylogenetic system of classification was entirely based on evolutionary system of class uh, evolutionary relationship or phylogeny and according to phylogenetic system of classification we considered that if the two species or if two organisms they belong to same group which means they have same ancestor right so organisms 
having same ancestor belong to same taxa taxa means group right so according to phylogenetic system of classification we consider that if the organisms having same ancestor they belong to same group if they having different ancestor they belong to different group according to phylogenetic system of classification so in phylogenetic system of classification we gave importance to evolutionary history from which ancestor they evolved right so usually fossils or fossil records are used so to give phylogenetic system of classification usually fossil records are used but what if fossil records are not available right so if fossil records are not available then we can take help from other sources we can take help from other sources like numerical taxonomy we are going to discuss this numerical taxonomy right and phy uh, cytos taxonomy and chemo taxonomy and chemo taxonomy so if fossils are not available then how to give phylogenetic system of classification we take we can take help from either numerical taxonomy cyto taxonomy or chemo taxonomy so let's start first with numerical taxonomy also known as phenetics remember phylogenetic and phenetics are different phenetics means numerical taxonomy right so what is numerical taxonomy beta in numerical taxonomy there is a use of computer we feed data right suppose i have two plants so i will feed data of the two plants how they are looking how are their stem root leaf every data we will fill and the data will be analyzed or assessed by the computer and the uh, they uh, the computer will give us the result whether uh, what percentage uh, do they basically do they have uh, basically what percentage of common character they have right so there is a use of computer in numerical taxonomy and uh, it is based on uh, observable character hundreds of characters can be considered so hundreds of characters can be considered at a single time so we can feed hundreds of data at a single time and each character is given equal importance whatever the character is whether it is a root stem leaf or flower every character is given equal importance and codes and numbers are assigned to each character suppose i have two plants and the first character is whether the leaf is uh, whether the stem has hair or not right so if a plant a has hair then i'll write plus if plant b does not have hair i will write minus right so there is a list of characters in the computer i just have to feed plus or minus so codes or numbers are assigned in numerical taxonomy right so i will assign basically codes and number plus minus or zero or one any any code or uh, number i can 
assigned here right so in numerical taxonomy basically there is a use of computer so codes or numbers are assigned right so like if character is present then i'll write plus if character is absent then i'll write minus right and then the data will be assessed by the computer data is assessed right and we get the result so this is how numerical taxonomy works so we need to feed every data of the plant that we need to find out right in which group i need to put this plant so i will observe or i will write every observable character and then i will write whether the character is present or not then the computer will give us the data then we can consider whether the whether to put these plants together or not after numerical taxonomy second is cytotaxonomy in taxo in cytotaxonomy we mainly focus on chromosomes so this cytotaxonomy is based on structure number and behavior of chromosome so if the number structure and behavior of chromosome is common between the two plants then i'll put two plants into the same group if the behavior number and the structure of chromosome are different then i'll put those plant into separate group right so this is what we call as a cyto taxonomy i'll focus on only chromosome the number structure and behavior of chromosome okay so first is numerical taxonomy second is cytotaxonomy when do we use numerical taxonomy cytotaxonomy chemo taxonomy when there is no fossil record available right then with the help of numerical taxonomy cytotaxonomy and chemo taxonomy i can give phylogenetic system of classification or i can place the plant into its group okay so last is chemo taxonomy last is chemo taxonomy right so chemo taxonomy is based on chemical constituent in plant what type of molecules are present in plants for example sequence of dna you must have studied the biomolecules chapter dna is a polymer of nucleotide right dna is a molecule of, um, polymer of is it is a chain of nucleotides so what is the sequence of nucleotide if the two plants having dna of almost same nucleotide sequence then i'll put those plant into the same group if they having they are having different sequences then i'll put those plant into two separate groups right so in chemo taxonomy we are focusing on the chemical constituent which means we are focusing on a different molecules right whether they are matching or not okay i hope everything is clear till here so after this here we have finished our system of classification after this i'll draw a chart right a flow chart in which i will explain in what sequence we are going to study about the plants in this chapter okay so we'll start with the plants the plants are first divided into two groups non embryophytes and 
एम्ब्रियोफाइट्स सो नॉन एम्ब्रियोफाइट्स बीटा मीन्स एम्ब्रियो इज नॉट प्रेजेंट एम्ब्रियो इज नॉट प्रेजेंट राइट सो इन विच ग्रुप ऑफ प्लांट एम्ब्रियो इज नॉट प्रेजेंट दैट ग्रुप ऑफ प्लांट इज एलगी दिस इज द फर्स्ट ग्रुप ऑफ प्लांट दैट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट टूडे एंड एम्ब्रियो फाइट मीन्स एम्ब्रियो इज प्रेजेंट सो बेटा इन एलगी एम्ब्रियो इज नॉट फॉर्म्ड वेर इज इन एम्ब्रियो फाइट एम्ब्रियो इज फॉर्म सो द फर्स्ट एम्ब्रियो फाइट इज फॉर्म्ड इन नॉन ट्रेक्यो फाइट्स और ए ट्रेक्यो फाइट्स वेर एज सेकेंड ग्रुप आर ट्रेक्यो फाइट्स सो ए ट्रेक्यो फाइट्स और नॉन ट्रेक्यो फाइट मीन्स वेस्कुला बंडल्स आर एबसेंट विच मीन्स जायलम एंड फ्लोएम आर एबसेंट वेस्कुला बंडल्स आर एबसेंट एंड इन ट्रेक्यो फाइट्स वेस्कुला बंडल्स आर एप्स प्रेजेंट सो इन नॉन ट्रेक्यो फाइट द एग्जाम्पल इज ब्रायोफाइट सो ब्रायोफाइट वॉज द फर्स्ट वन टू हैव एम्ब्रियो बट दे डिड नॉट हैव वेस्कुला बंडल दे डिड नॉट हैव और दे डोंट हैव वेस्कुला बंडल नाउ बेटा द ट्रेक्यो फाइट ट्रेक्यो फाइट इज डिवाइडेड इन टू टू ग्रुप्स स्पर्मेटोफाइट्स नॉन स्पर्मेटोफाइट्स एंड स्पर्मेटोफाइट्स नॉन स्पर्मेटोफाइट मीन्स सीड्स आर एबसेंट and spermatophyte means seeds are present okay so seeds are absent but vascular bundle are present in pteridophyte so for the first time vascular bundle was seen in pteridophytes in pteridophytes p is silent pteridophytes now the spermatophyte is divided into two groups non flowering plants and flowering plants non flowering plants are gymnosperms so gymnosperms were the first one to produce seed but they did not produce flower and the first plant to have flower was angiosperms right so in this sequence we are going to study in this chapter so before i think last year till last year angiosperms were included uh, in this chapter but now ncrt have uh, deleted this topic angiosperms because the detail of angiosperms you are going to study in uh, your first chapter in 12th right so that's why uh, that might be the reason they have deleted this topic but uh, still i'm going to give you some brief about angiosperms right so that you will be prepared uh, whenever you uh, basically uh, study the 12th topic Twelfth class topic. Okay, so yes, uh, first we are going to start with algae, then bryophyte, the gymnosperms, and then angiosperms. I'll give you a few seconds to understand it. Let me know if you have any kind of doubt in this topic or till here. After this, we'll start with algae. So 
so algae were the first group of plant that came or that evolved so let's start with algae so beta will do some introduction of algae algae basically are multicellular right chlorophyllous organisms right they have thalloid body thalloid body means their body is not differentiated into root stem and leaf not differentiated into root stem and leaf you cannot see you don't see root leaf and stem in algae that's why we call we say that they have thalloid body they are mostly aquatic but can be found in terrestrial condition also they can be found in soil rock right they can be associated with fungi can be found associated with fungi we have discussed this algae plus fungi is known as lichens algae plus fungi is known as lichens they are they can also be found associated with the sloth bear they are found they grow on the body of sloth bear so that sloth bear can camouflage and in return algae gets the shelter right so algae can also grow on sloth bear right so algae grow on sloth bear and uh, give sloth bear kind of camouflage condition right and in return algae gets the shelter algae body generally the body that we see the algae that we see that body is known as gametophyte so main body of algae that we see is gametophyte the main body that we see of algae is known as gametophyte which means gamete producing body gamete producing body and the main body of algae is haploid haploid means i already told you when the each cell is having only one set of chromosome when each cell has one set of chromosome when each cell has one set of chromosome that is known as haploid condition okay so the main body of algae that we see is gametophyte and that body is haploid which means each cell is having only one set of chromosome which means every chromosome has only one copy such organism is known as haploid we do have two copies of each chromosome we are diploid algae is haploid so i'll give some example of uh, unicellular and there are some unicellular algae examples some of the unicellular algae some of the filamentous algae some of the colonial algae that live in colony and some of the giant algae okay so the unicellular algae examples are chlamydomonas 
एंड क्लोरेला सो बेटा अकॉर्डिंग टू सम सिस्टम ऑफ क्लासिफिकेशन अकॉर्डिंग टू फाइव सिस्टम ऑफ क्लासिफिकेशन फाइव किंगडम सिस्टम ऑफ क्लासिफिकेशन क्लेमाइडोमोनाज एंड क्लोरेला कम अंडर किंगडम प्रोटेस्टा बट अकॉर्डिंग टू सम अदर सिस्टम ऑफ क्लासिफिकेशन क्लेमाइडोमोनाज एंड क्लोरेला कैन ऑल्सो बी स्टडेड अंडर एल गी सो दे आर प्लेस इज क्वाइट कन्फ्यूजिंग दे कैन बी कंसिडर अंडर प्रोटेस्टा एंड दे कैन ऑल्सो बी कंसिडर अगेंस्ट अंडर एल गी बट इफ द क्वेश्चन कम्स दैट अकॉर्डिंग टू फाइव सिस्टम क्लास फाइव किंगडम सिस्टम क्लासिफिकेशन वट इज द पोजिशन ऑफ क्लेमाइडोमोनाज एंड क्लोरेला यू विल राइट protesta you will write protesta right so according to five system of five kingdom system of classification the place of chlamydomonas and chlorella is protesta but we can also study it under algae filamentous algae means the algae which look, look like tube or thread like structure spirogyra eulothrix ectocarpus these are the algae that are filamentous in their structure colonial algae that lives in colony volvox colony is known as synobium they live in colony and the colony is known as synobium giant algae means the algae which can grow up to 100 meters they are very huge they can grow up to 100 meters example kelps kelps are the are the algae that can grow up to 100 meters they are very huge algae they are very huge algae okay so now i'm going to show you some of the algae so beta this is volvox this is colonial algae so this is parent colony and inside parent colony after reproduction beta these are daughter colonies so you can also see daughter colonies after reproduction inside the parent colony and here they have drawn the diagram of a single cell this is the this is how single cell looks like this is how single cell look like and they live in colony this is tube like this is filamentous algae beta spirogyra spirogyra eulothrix ectocarpus all are filamentous and this is single cell algae known as chlamydomonas right so this is chlamydomonas so yes here we can see that uh, how colonial how filamentous and how single cell algae looks like okay so i am giving you giving you some time to understand if you have any doubt you can let me know after this we are going to discuss about how algae reproduce right how they reproduce so let's start the types of reproduction in algae if there are any doubt please let me know in the comment section reproduction in algae they can reproduce or they can have vegetative reproduction they can have asexual reproduction or they can show sexual reproduction okay so three types of reproduction can be observed in algae so vegetative reproduction through fragmentation through fragmentation and fragmentation can all only occur in the body which is filamentous so this fragmentation occurs in filamentous algae 
what happens in fragmentation the filamentous body is spl uh, basically split into different fragments and each fragment can give rise to new algae right this is known as fragmentation let me correct the spelling of fragmentation here so how algae reproduce through asexual reproduction through asexual spores and one of the spore or most common spore is most common spore is zoospores most common spore that you see in algae is zoospore beta zoospore are motile spores remember we have already studied about zoospore in fungi they are motile spores motile means having flagella okay they are having flagella let's talk about sexual reproduction beta sexual reproduction can be of three type first is isogamous reproduction it means similar gametes right similar gametes isogamy can be of two type both gametes are motile when both gametes are motile right example eulothrix so in eulothrix isogamy occurs where both gametes are motile next is when both gametes are non motile they are without flagella they are without flagella when both gametes are non motile and are similar this happens in spirogyra so what happens in spirogyra both gametes are without flagella but in eulothrix both gametes have flagella but both are similar that's why it is known as isogamous as isogamous second is beta anisogamous anisogamous means slightly different gametes slightly different gametes right so here the in uh, an isogamy there are slightly different gametes like this right the gametes are slightly different example is udorhina it is also a colonial algae udorhina so in udorhina an isogamy occur in which gametes are slightly different third is oogamous third is oogamous the first is isogamous second is an isogamous and third is oogamous right what happens in oogamous i am giving you some time to understand it 
kindly observe or learn everything if you have any doubt please let me know in the comment section i'm giving you few seconds to understand the types of a mode of reproduction in algae we are going to discuss oogamous in the next slide let me know if there is any doubt in the comment section okay so let's discuss oogamous so what happens in oogamous beta what happens in oogamous reproduction in oogamous type of reproduction basically uh, there is one very small male gamete and very large female gamete so in oogamous type of reproduction there is a small male gamete and large female gamete and the large female gamete right so there are two condition in oogamous where male gamete is motile and female gamete is non motile right so this is the condition where male gamete is motile and female gamete is non motile such thing happens in volvox fucus right you have to remember the example of algae here i am writing only important example you don't want to skip okay so uh, whatever name of algae i am writing you have to remember it it is important and the second condition is when where both male gamete and female gamete are non motile male gamete is non motile and female gamete is non motile right so here you can see that both the gametes are non motile both the gametes are non motile without flagella example is all the members of red algae all the members of red algae right in the next slide i am going to tell you that uh, what is red algae what is green algae what is brown algae so here you can see in oogamous the male gamete is small female is large but female gamete is always non motile but male gamete can or cannot be non uh, motile or non motile okay so these are the two condition that you see in oogamous okay so after oogamous we'll start with algae we'll start with algae so today we are going to do few points of algae and in tomorrow's class we will go into the details so as usual i have compared the three groups of algae in tabular form so that it is very easy for you or it is easier for you to understand so algae are mainly classified into three groups chlorophycy rhodophycy and pheophycy chlorophycy is commonly known as green algae rhodophycy is commonly known as red algae and pheophycy is commonly known as brown algae and it is on the basis of the pigments present in them what pigment is giving them their color whether the flagella is present or not and if present what type of flagella is present or how many flagella are present what are the food they are storing in their cell storage product in their cell and the chemistry of their cell wall which chemical is present in their cell wall which chemical is present in their cell wall okay so the first comparison 
between these group is their cell wall right so in chlorophyce member the cell wall is made up of cellulose and pectose right pectose is a modified form of pectin right it is a modified sugar from pectin so there is a inner layer of cellulose and the outer layer of pectose in the cell wall of green algae right so green algae cell wall is majorly made up of cellulose and pectin or pectose rhodophyce is also made up of cellulose pectin so cellulose and pectin is present in cell wall of all the members of algae but here the important compound is polysulfate what is polysulfate here beta polysulfate is a sulfur containing hydrocolloid sulfur containing hydrocolloid what is hydrocolloid beta which has good water holding capacity or absorbing capacity so hydrocolloid is a compound that is having good water holding capacity okay so yes polysulfate is a sulfur containing hydrocolloid an example of polysulfate here is agar you must have heard of agar and carrageen carrageen and agar they are commercially used in laboratories to grow different microorganisms they are also used for making jellies or ice creams so they are commercially used products agar and carrageen they are extracted from the cell wall of red algae so red algae in the cell wall of red algae there are some compounds like agar and carrageen which have been extracted and used commercially okay let's talk about pheophyce member they have cellulose 6 cell wall plus pectin is also present pectin are pre uh, pectin is present in all chlorophyce rhodophyce and pheophyce but they are also a outer covering gelatinous covering known as algin what is algin it is a non sulfur hydrocolloid agar and carrageen are sulfur containing hydrocolloid and algin is non sulfur hydrocolloid algin is also used commercially algin is extracted from the cell wall of brown algae okay so i'm again repeating the cell wall of chlorophyce is made up of cellulose and pectose pectose is a modified version of pectin nothing else uh, the cell wall of red algae is made up of cellulose pectin and polysulfate and the cell wall of pheophyce is made up of cellulose pectin and algin let's talk about their habitat where do you find the members of chlorophyce mostly in fresh water where to find the members of rhodophyce mostly in salty marine water but some can be fresh water and pheophyce are rarely found in fresh water they are mostly found in marine water right so yes these are the habitat in which you can find members of different groups right so after this we'll discuss two more points then we'll end today's lecture and we will continue in the next lecture we'll we'll finish algae and we'll start with bryophytes in tomorrow's lecture i hope everything is clear so next is about the major pigments photosynthetic pigment present in them so in chlorophyce they have chlorophyll a they have chlorophyll b carotenes and xanthophylls but these are dominant pigment these are dominant pigment that's why the member of chlorophyce appears green where is in rhodophyce chlorophyll a is present chlorophyll b is present carotenes are present xanthophylls are present
right and phycoerythrin phycoerythrin is present which is a red color pigment it is a dominant pigment in red algae phycoerythrin that's why the member of rhodophyce appears red in color then pheophyce beta chlorophyll a chlorophyll c carotenes xanthophyll and one of the important xanthophyll in pheophyce is fucoxanthin fucoxanthin give brown to olive green color brown to olive green color and it is the dominant pigment it is the dominant pigment so in chlorophyce the chlorophyll are dominant in rhodophyce phycoerythrin are dominant and in pheophyce the fucoxanthin is dominant okay that's why it is giving the different respective color now talk about storage food beta the chlorophyce stores starch the member of chlorophyce stores starch and sometimes oil also in rhodophyce they store floridian starch beta it is a special type of starch whose or uh, the structure of which similar to glycogen and amylopectin right so floridian starch is a special type of starch which uh, structure is similar to glycogen and amylopectin i'm sure the structure of glycogen and amylopectin you have already studied in your biomolecule chapter what is glycogen what is amylopectin in pheophyce beta there are complex carbohydrates like laminarin or mannitol so laminarin and mannitol are complex carbohydrates so the members of pheophyce stores laminarin or mannitol right so the member of chlorophyce stores starch and oil the member of rhodophyce stores floridian starch and member of pheophyce store laminarin and mannitol so this is the last topic that we are going to study today and will continue in the next class so most of the part we have already discussed about algae so revise everything and come prepared for the next class so in the next class we are going to end this topic algae and we are going to start with bryophytes i hope everything is clear to you guys if there is uh, there is any doubt please let me know in the comment section let's discuss some question before we end this class so first question is male gametes are flagellated in let's see spirogyra beta spirogyra isogamy occur in which both gametes are non motile okay so this is can't be the answer anomena is a bacteria and there is no sexual reproduction in bacteria there is no sexual reproduction in bacteria polysiphonia is a red algae and in red algae no flagella is there and the remaining is ectocarpus yes our answer will be ectocarpus in male gametes having flagella so answer will be ectocarpus i hope this question is clear to you guys so here we end our lecture i hope everything is clear to you guys 
so i'll see you in the next lecture we'll uh, will complete this topic algae and we'll start with a new topic that is the second group of plant bryophyte right so uh, see you in the next lecture till then take care everyone bye